Iraq's prime minister is calling for calm following an attempt to assassinate him. Seven bodyguards were injured in a blast at his home in the heavily fortified green zone in central Baghdad. The Iraqi capital was already tense after a disputed election. Gunfire heard from Baghdad's green zone early on Sunday morning. Diplomats based nearby said they heard explosions. State television aired these photos showing the damage to the prime minister's residence. It was apparently targeted by an explosives-laden drone. Mustafa al-Kadimi was unhurt in what the Iraqi military called an attempted assassination. My house was the target of a cowardly attack. But thanks to God, I and those who work with me are in good health. Our security and military forces are working on protecting Iraq and its stability. Cowardly rockets and drone attacks do not build countries and don't build a future. We are working on building our homeland by respecting the state and its institutions and by building a better future for all Iraqis. Baghdad's heavily guarded green zone has been at the center of unrest following Iraq's election last month. Iran-backed Shia militias have been camped out nearby after losing much of their parliamentary power in the vote. They allege voting and counting irregularities, though EU observers have rejected those claims. On Friday, protests over the result turned violent. Security forces used tear gas and live rounds when demonstrators tried to enter the green zone. Witnesses said two protesters were killed and dozens injured. The attempted attack on Prime Minister al Qadimi marks another escalation. No group has claimed responsibility, but experts point to the pro-Iran militias. Uh, the problem is with these groups, and this has been the situation for the last year and a half, is when they see that the Prime Minister is not willing to be more aggressive, they tend to, they tend to escalate. At the same time, if the Prime Minister attempts to take a step against them um, and show some force, he sees at some point that he is not able. They are too entrenched in the security forces. They have too much influence. As tensions soar, some fear the stage could be set for a bloody confrontation. And for more on this, I'm joined now from Baghdad by journalist Sofia Niti. Uh, Sofia, is there any indication of who could be behind this attack? Good morning, Nick. No, there is no group that immediately claimed the responsibility for this attack. But all the eyes are turned toward the armed Iran-aligned Shia militias, who have been protesting, as you explained before, since weeks here in Baghdad. So it's been almost one month since the parliamentary election took place on October 10, which was a almost a violence-free vote and without major technical glitches. But still, following this vote, these militia supporters pitched tents near the green zone not far from here and they rejected the result of this election so they threatened violence uh, toward the prime minister unless their demand for a recount were met so the situation is that those militias lost many many votes following on these elections they got less than 20 compared to around 50 in the last vote mm. and as you explained before the situation escalated further on friday with dozens of security forces injured here in baghdad and with additional threatens to the Prime Minister Mustafa al -Kadimi. And the Prime Minister um, is calling for restraint. Uh, is anybody going to listen? Well, he already called for restraint many, many times before. Each time there is a threat from the militias or the militia storm on the green zone, he, he calls for an appeasement. But as we saw, uh, nothing changed so far, not even after the election. So um, it happened several times before. Uh, once he tried to, to hold a, a strong line uh, arresting a, a leader of uh, Shia militias, Qasim Mosley, in last uh, June. But after a few days, he had to cave and to release these uh, militias leader because the militia uh, stormed on the green zone one sitting again so of course he tries but he lacks uh, national support and he lacks uh, of um, of resources to, to appease the situation
And just for the bigger picture, will Iraq be able to form a government people recognize as legitimate if the losing parties in the last elections continue to reject the results? Well, it's still early to, to understand this because the negotiation following the result of the election are still ongoing. So uh, for, for what we know uh, so far, the big winner of this election is the same as the 2018 vote. So uh, Moqtad al-Sadr, a Shia cleric who has millions of followers and the large armed group. Too. Uh, so he emerged as the big winner of this vote um, with 74 seats. Uh, and the second winner is once again the same as 2018 vote, Nuri al-Maliki uh, coalition mm. state of law. So we're still uh, watching these negotiation and rivalities between these groups. So we still don't know who is going to, to hold an alliance. Okay, thank you for that insight. Sophia Niti in Baghdad.